So now we're going to cover power laws, indices or exponents, which are pretty much all the same thing. Um, so yeah, they're all the same thing. A power is called a power because you've got three plus two, three times two, or three to the power of two, the, the power gives you the most powerful result. So it's actually the most powerful symbol out of these. And it's also called an index. And indices um, mean that it indicates the level of power. It shows you what the power is. So you can see here that this two indicates that the three is by two, so it's called a, uh, an index, or these are indices. And exponential in English means when something grows by a lot. So something's exponential, it grows a lot. So the power symbol is the thing which makes it grow the most. So whether you call it power, an index, or an exponent, it's all the same thing. All right, so x to the power of three means that we've got three x's. So that little number here just literally tells you how many x's there are there. And it wouldn't matter if it was a to the power of three, that would mean three a's, and five to the power of three would mean three fives. One thing you've got to know is that everything has an invisible times one, because everything has one of itself. So if you've got five, this is the same as saying one times five. And we don't say the one times because it's pretty obvious, but that's what it is. And x would be one times x, and x to the power of three would be one times x to the power of three. Now this doesn't seem important until you look at these powers. So x to the power of one is just one times x. This shows that there's only one x. This shows that there's two x's. And this shows that there are three. So what happens when it's x to the power of zero? Well, there are no x's there, so it just equals one. And this wouldn't matter what letter or number was used. If it was five to the power of zero, that would also equal one, etc. Now if you've got three to the power of two times three to the power of three, what this means is we've got two threes multiplied by each other, and then three threes multiplied by each other. So we've got one, two, three, four, five threes. So this is actually three to the power of five. So that's what this equals up here. And what you'll notice is you've got this little trick where you can just, if, if these numbers are the same, you can just count the powers together and that gives you five. And that works the same thing if we use x's, so x to the power of 2 and x to the power of 3, which would give us, in total, 5 x's, so that's x to the power of 5. Um, with this sort of thing, we've got 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 2. So this means we've got two of these multiplied by each other, so it looks like this. And we've learnt from our previous, um, previous rule that if they're multiplied together and these are the same, well we can add them together so that gives us 2 to the power of 6. And it'd be the same deal if this was a letter. We've got 2x to the power of 3's multiplied by each other because of this 2. Add the 3's together and that's x to the power of 6. And the rule here is just it's 3 times 2 which gives us that 6 and it works the same with the x as well. Now if you've got ab to the power of 2, same deal as before, just means you've got two ABs multiplied by each other. So if we look at it, this means we've got one, two A's, and one, two B. So another way of writing that would be A to the power of two and B to the power of two. So yeah, um, what you can see by the trick is that the, this power just goes to both of these things, which is what's happened here. Now when we're dividing things, we've got two to the power of five divided by two to the power of three. This equals two to the power of two. Now let's have a look at y. So we've got five twos multiplied by each other up here and three multiplied by each other down here. So we can just cancel these like that and that just gives us two left. And the reason you can cancel them is because two divided by two equals one. So all of these just turn into ones. So we've got one times two times two, which gives us two to the power of two. Same deal with x's, we've got five x's at the top, we've got three x's at the bottom, cancel them and then we've got x to the power of two. And the trick here, if you just want to look at it, it's just five minus three gives us two, but this is actually what we're doing here. And a quick note, if you've got two to the power of negative one, that's one on two. If you've got two to the power of negative two, it's one on two squared. Two to the power of negative five would be one on two to the power of five. And x to the power of negative one, one on x, x to the power of negative two, one on x squared x to the power of negative 5, 1 on 5 to the power of x. So I could prove this, but I don't find it helps students very much. So just kind of remember, when you've got a negative, it goes down the bottom, and whatever power is there, the power remains. That's it. Now, here we've got 2 over 3 to the power of 3. So because it's to the power of 3, it means we've got 3 of them. So 1, 2, 3. 
And so you've got two times two times two and three times three times three. So that's just two to the power of three and three to the power of three. And you can see the trick here is this, this power goes there and there as well. And it works the same with letters. So we've got three of them, bang, bang, bang. So that's three X's divided by three Y's, X to the power of three divided by Y to the power of three. Now roots, so the square root of four is two because two times two equals four. Now the cube root of eight is two because two times two times two gives us eight. And the fourth root of 81 gives us three because it's three times three is nine times three is 27 times three gives us 81. And that's what that actually shows us. And the root sign is actually a little r. So if you look at r here, you can see how it evolves. It goes from there to there to eventually becoming the root sign, which is essentially just an r. Um, here's another thing. So the square root of four times the square root of four equals four. Now this should be pretty obvious because the square root of four is two and two times two equals four. Why am I showing you this? You'll see in a second. Um, and you could say four is the same as saying four to the power of one. So that's what we're gonna do there. Now the question is, if we wanted to represent this as a power, four to the power of what times four to the power of what would give us four to the power of one? Well, we know when we've got things which times that we add them together, two, plus three gives us five. So what gives us one? Well, it's gonna end up being half plus half gives us one. So what we've discovered here is four to the power of the half is the same as the square root of four. So that's something to remember that by. And just as a note, um, if you've got something to the power of half, it's the same as the square root of that something. Something to the power of a third is the same as a third root of that something. Something to the power of a quarter is a fourth root of that thing, and something to the power of a fifth is a fifth root of that thing, so on. Um, and going a little bit beyond, now we look at um, if you've got a fraction like this as a power, it's equivalent to this. Now what does that mean? So if you've got x to the power of two on three, that's the same as saying a three root and a power of two. Okay, if you've got x to the power of five on seven, well, that's the same as saying a seven root and a five power, as you can see there. And x to the power of three on two is the same as saying a square root, because remember, x to the power of half would give us a square root of x, and the power is three. So the top number gives you the power, and the bottom number gives you a root. Now, you can actually look at this so that um, it's in a slightly different order. So, you can actually put the power in afterwards. Here I've done it first, but it can actually be the cube root of x to the power of two. Same thing with this, the seventh root can come first, then to the power of five, and the square root, and then to the power of, that should be a three. So a power law summary. So basically, if you've got x to the power of one, that equals x, in the same way, six to the power of one gives us six, x to the power of zero gives us one, in the same way, six to the power of zero gives us one. If you've got something to the power of something times that same something to the power of another thing, you can add them. That was a really complicated way of saying it. But for instance, if you've got six to the power of two and six to the power of three, it's two plus three, which gives us six to the power of five. Um, when they're divided, you can minus them. So six to the power of five divided by six to the power of two gives us a six to the power of three. Um, when you've got a negative, it just goes down the bottom. So six to the power of negative one is one on six. Um, if you've got a negative and it's a number different than one, well, it keeps the same power. If you've got six to the power of negative five, it's the same as saying one on six to the power of five. And if you've got something in brackets and then it's powered, well, you multiply those two things together, those two powers. So you've got six to the power of three to the power of five. That gives you six to the power of 15, because three times five is 15. And then if you've got two things in a bracket to the power of something, well, the power goes to both of those things. So six times two to the power of three would be six to the power of three times two to the power of three. And then if they're divided and you've got a power, the power goes to both of them. So you've got six over two to the power of three. That's the same as six to the power of three divided by two to the power of three. And then finally, the top thing gives you the power. The bottom thing gives you the root. So that's the root, that's the power. But you can also do the root first and then have the power second. So if I've got eight to the power of two on three, well, it's a third root and it's a two power, but you can also have the third root first and then the power after that. So hopefully that makes sense. I went through that super fast. 
This should be relevant for year nines, tens, elevens, even twelves. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of a rehash on this. And I've got heaps more resources at mathsmethods.com.au. So visit there and sign up for free and I'll send you a whole bunch of stuff. Hope this has helped and um, good luck.